Hi everyone, I'm Rowan Hisayo Buchanan, author of Harmless Like You and Starling Days. Welcome to The Bottom Drawer, Books That Changed My Life, a series that is part of the Foundation's Change Theme for 2021. For this second season, we feature writers whose UK tape debuts have been just published. We ask them about the books that inspired them to write, that hinge on their earliest efforts, and moments or books that changed their lives. For our fourth in the series, I welcome Elizabeth Miki Brina, author of the book Speak Okinawa. Elizabeth received her MFA in creative writing from the University of New Orleans. She is the recipient of a Rona Jaffe Bread Breadlift Scholarship and a New York Summer Writers Institute Scholarship and currently lives in New Orleans. So, hello, thank you for being here with me today. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy to be here and I uh, appreciate this conversation very much. So I thought we'd hit off with a couple of the season's questions and then maybe ask you to read a bit and we'll talk a little bit more specifically about Speak Okinawa, if that works for you. That sounds great. Amazing. Okay, so key question. What is the unpublished piece at the bottom of your drawer? Okay, that's a... Uh, uh, um, uh, I guess kind of uh, kind of loaded. It start it starts it starts off heavy. Everyone, um, <laughs> I I wrote I, I initially started to write a lot about um, uh, breakups and and failed relationships. That was like the uh, um, the forefront of my mind. What I was most obsessed uh, about writing about, um, and also uh, like you know, writing about my sexuality and promiscuity and issues with consent. Uh, but I, but early on, I really avoided, uh, um, blatantly avoided writing about my parents. <laughs> like, I, you know, I was just like, no, 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 that's not, uh, um, yeah, that's not important. Uh, that has nothing to do with this. And, uh, um, and I think that uh, once I started to make those connections about how, uh, the way they loved me and the way they loved each other really informed the way that I loved and and uh, approached romantic relationships. That's when things started to oh like, you know uh, really click uh, for me. So so yeah, it was uh, um, it, it was uh, it's something that I'm I'm still thinking about a lot, and that is a work in progress. So I'm hoping maybe I can I can go back to that pieces those pieces and make and make more connections. Oh, that's really exciting that's cool. <laughs> we get more of your work oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I love this book dear audience I loved it so much and then lent it to my mother and then my father stole it from her it's like that sort of book it's sort of <laughs> book nicked. oh that's <laughs> great that makes me so happy <laughs> um, okay so I guess mm -hmm. maybe now would be a good moment to read just a tiny bit from that book if you sure sure uh um I'm reading uh so the, uh, I'm reading from one of the chapters that is, uh, um, you know, for the, the historical chapters that uh, kind of uh, try to explain Okinawan history, mostly to myself, because uh, um, it's something that I hadn't known for a very long time. Uh, and I do it in uh, like a first person plural uh, um, perspective. And so it'll just, uh, um, and this is, uh, this part takes place um, right uh, after um, the militarization of Okinawa started uh, um, and uh, shortly after the Battle of Okinawa. And, um, and so I'm just, I'll just start right there. Um, we are done with this war, but they're not. They have a war to fight in Korea and then a war to fight in Vietnam. As long as communism is a threat, Vice President Richard Nixon announces during his visit in 1953, the United States will hold Okinawa. They must use our land to build a fortress to protect the free world, a world in which we are not included. They must use our land to launch ships that carry tanks and guns, to launch planes that drop bombs. We shudder with each sound as ship after ship departs, as plane after plane takes off remembering the damage and devastation, the slaughter those ships and planes have caused. They must use our land to store missiles and poisonous gases. 
We feel guilty, complicit, even though we have no choice. Forests and fields that have just begun to heal are bulldozed and replaced with concrete. Farms that once grew pineapple and sugarcane, crops that sustained our meager economy are bulldozed and replaced with concrete. Family owned plots that have been passed down for generations are confiscated, often at gunpoint and residents are evicted. Homes are bulldozed and burned and replaced with concrete. By what becomes known as the bayonets and bulldozers campaign, over 50,000 of us lose titles to our land. In 1956, as part of mass demonstrations and protests, as part of our all island land struggle, 100,000 of us assemble at their headquarters in Naha and they agree to pay us for the land they already stole. But it is not enough, not nearly enough. So we become labor. We are hired to build bases. We are hired to build barracks, armories, loading docks, landing strips, fences, gates, more roads. We are hired to serve food in their cafeterias and clean their houses. The, pretty of, the prettiest of us, those of us who have curves and speak the best English, get to work at the post office and fancy restaurants like McDonald's. Cities form around these bases with bright neon signs in English, advertising to them, welcoming them, with bars and clubs where soldiers can yell and laugh, fight and flirt and spend money like it's their last day on earth because well, who knows, their last day could be very soon. They are fighting a war and they pay us to help them forget. But we remember, we will always remember. Thank you for sharing that. I find it so incredibly beautiful. And I, I have so many questions about this book, but one of the things that particularly struck me is the choice in a memoir to write about history and not only to write about history, but to claim it with that use of we. Um, it seemed so huge to me. And especially as a mixed race person myself who often struggles to claim family and connection, I really connected with this book that is a lot about that struggle and yet the fact that you do that and you make that move in the writing itself and I wondered if you could talk about that. Yeah, it, um, it, it, it was it was quite a uh, um, revelation for me when I started uh, to write the history in the in the first person plural because um, uh, like I, I, I needed I needed it to feel close and I needed it to feel personal and I needed to show that, um, uh, you know, that, that history is still a part of me. It's, it's still, you know, it still lives inside me and it, and it's, uh, and it perpetuates uh, that, 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 that uh, uh, these events that, that didn't directly happen to me um, still happen to me, right? Uh, and, and, and I think, you know, I, I mentioned before how, um, it was really, uh, I needed to explain it to myself, the history, um, because for, you know, I, I, I was 34 years old <laughs> um, before I learned Okinawan history. And it's, it's, it's part of the theme of the book uh, that, um, you know, I was 34 years old until I learned this history, uh, which means I grew up not knowing my mother or myself. And, um, and my mother was born uh, right after the Battle of Okinawa, which, which devastated the island. And uh, she grew up in, in poverty and chaos and, um, and just absorbed all of that grief. And, um, and then she also witnessed the militarization of the island and, and, and all the, uh, the crimes that, uh, that, that the military personnel committed on the island. Uh, and, and she internalized all of that, the, the um, injustice and the inferiority. Um, and, that, and then it, it manifested in how, um, you know, she, she raised me, right? Like uh, she, she just had a lot of pain and sadness uh, that I um, just blamed her for as an individual. Like, you know, not realizing how far reaching uh, uh, this came from. Uh, and, it, and it didn't help either that I grew up in the United States in the uh, um, in the '80s and '90s, uh, which was not a very um, those weren't very woke, accepting decades of um, of anyone who wasn't um, you know white, 100% white. Um, so I uh, I really uh, I, I I internalized that too the the kind the uh, this. Um, the, 
I guess this view that uh, um, if you're not white, it, you're you're inferior, you're lesser, and 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 I uh, I look down on her for it. Uh, so there was a lot going on uh, um, <laughs> that uh, cannot just be explained by the individual and and our our per, our personal history. It's it's more it's a manifestation. Our personal histories are manifestations of what's going on globally. Uh, and 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 I and I and I wanted to to capture to capture that. Yeah, and I, I think you do it so beautifully. And you know, you were saying that you didn't know this history, and it changed how you saw your mother for you. And mm -hmm. I write about that in the book. And I was wondering, did writing the book also change your feelings about family, or the way you were able to relate, or had you done that work essentially before you were able to write? Oh. Um... Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, writing is such a it's such a powerful mechanism for for understanding and and then and for healing. Uh, um, and one of the things, what it, it's it's just it's very helpful to just you, you have all this kind of mush and muddle in your mind, and it's very helpful to write it all down and and to see it you know, and, and then and it's, it's easier to make connections if you could just see it and hold it in place, uh, you, you know, your memories and your insights. Uh, and, and something I definitely realize about my, my family, um, just how incredibly, like complicated and, and nuanced it is and, and writing about them. Uh, it helped me make connections, but it also helped me realize how much more there is to a person, right? Uh, <laughs> um, it, it's it, even, even what I could capture in words, I, I, I was like, there, but there's still so much more. Uh, um, and, you know, that, uh, that goes on of just existing <laughs> and, and, and being, and being a human. And also the, it, it was an incredibly bonding experience for me because I through writing about this I um I found a way to talk to my mother and communicate with her um I had I had never really asked her so many direct questions about her life before and uh and this book gave me a chance to do that uh and so the the strain um lifted a lot uh, uh I always felt I just felt the strain with talking to her uh, um, because of the language barrier, um, but also because of um, not knowing her, not knowing and appreciating uh, what what she had been through, and so and so writing about all of this uh, made me appreciate that, and I feel I just feel much more at ease and and comfortable uh, in her presence uh, and. And even for my father too, um, you know, it it helped it helped me get perspective on him. It was a little bit, I was a little more nervous for him to read it uh, because, you know, while this book kind of it it, it lifts my mother up, it sort of put, put, like knocks my father off his pedestal a little bit. Uh, and I and I thought that that would be really hard for him, but he uh, he read it and he really appreciated it. You know, he said thank you for you know I didn't. Uh, um, uh, I wish I had known all of that before, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm glad I know it now. He went, he said, I learned a lot. Uh, I just, it's, it's, it's amazing how people can change their minds, even in, you know, he's 73 <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, yeah, it's, it, and it's, and it's never too late. Uh, and I also, I just appreciate the, the generosity that they had for me, um, and the trust of uh i think i think that it was very bonding too that they're that they just were like go for it <laughs> spill spill our guts <laughs> and uh and they just let me <laughs> and uh and that's uh that's an, that's an incredibly uh selfless love you know that uh um i'm very lucky to have mm -hmm. always be grateful for it yeah. yeah this book to me seems to be a lot about trauma but just as much about love and just as much about love through trauma so yeah I, I can definitely see that you know my 
I said, mention my dad's a lot for members of the audience. My dad is an English guy. And he was like, oh, there are not enough books representing white men married to Asian women. I feel seen. And I was like, really? This is a thing you have wanted? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it is yeah. a very thoughtful and gentle um, exploration. And actually that brings me to a question I had, which is to me, you know, sometimes people think of memoir as sort of some stuff happened to you, you wrote it down. But this book feels to me like, such, and many memoirs, by the way, also feel this way, but yours in particular felt like such an act of imagination. And I don't mean that in a fake news, you made it up way, but mm -hmm. I can feel you imagining yourself in this book, both into the lives of the historical Okinawans and into your parents' lives. You putting your, it's not just like, these are my parents, they did some stuff to me. It's also mm -hmm. thinking what it would have been like for them. And I wonder if you could talk about sort of the role of imagination in writing memoir. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's. I think there's such a fine line between um, memory and imagination anyway, like uh, um, e even for even for the events and the experience that, ha you know, you experience firsthand um, or witness firsthand, there's still a lot of imagination involved uh, um, and uh, of just um re recreating it in your mind um and, and filling in gaps you know and I, and I had to do that for just my childhood memories um and and there's a really wonderful I I um I heard this uh uh I, I forget her name but she's a an expert you know she's an expert on memory and I listen you know I listened to a podcast oh my goodness why can't I remember her name uh uh but she said that memory is created um in the moment you're remembering not when it happens to you so so it is uh, so 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 memory is imagination uh um and 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 i think that also i mean when you you apply it to yourself uh it wasn't it wasn't that difficult for me to tr to uh, the closest people in my life to apply it to my parents because I, I remember, you know, I remember uh, their specific interactions with me and, um, and, you know, conversations that we had, uh, which allowed me to try to open up their past a little bit. Like, how, you know, how, how would these people that I know now navigate the world uh, before me? Uh, um, and I think that was really important because I, you know, for me, the purpose of memoir is uh, to understand, right? Like to, to, to understand yourself, to explain yourself, um, you know, why, why am I like this? <laughs> and, and we have to go, and sometimes we have to go back to before us. Uh, um, and, uh, uh, you know, the, re the reason why I'm like this is, not just because of everything that happened to me, but everything that happened to my parents, right? Uh, and then everything that happened before that, it 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 it, it continues. It's uh, um, the you know, there's not a fixed place of of origin, right? So so that's uh, yeah, it, that's why the imagination is a it was a powerful tool uh, for me to be able to be able to try to go back there, but it was, but it was always aided by memory, right? Uh, um, uh, what, what I remembered from, from my past and then the, the leap I could go to, to, to go backward, even further backward in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and even with the historical chapters too, it's, it, uh, um, you know, they weren't, they weren't my memories and that's something that I, I struggle with a little bit uh, um, if that was allowed, <laughs> um, because I, I, you know, I read I read a lot of memoirs to be able to to get those to get to those details, um, and uh, uh, and then the imagination having to use the imagination to uh, okay, so these are the these are the facts that I know. Uh, the, the, this is what I I heard. You know, this is what my mother told me. This is what my father told me. Uh, this is what I read uh, in in, te in in texts and memoirs, uh, and then how do I recreate that 
as as a as a scene or an image, um, a narrative. Uh, it, it, and it was and it was very much like uh, uh, curating for me, right? Like they they weren't uh, um, they they all existed, uh, and I just and I what I did was just try to put them together in a way that uh, um, could help me uh, explain myself, right? Ex explain uh, where I came from. You do it beautifully and very empathetically as well. The, it's always for those of you who haven't yet read this book what are you doing but also you know <laughs> you. you do make it very clear when you feel on less firm footing you sort of indicate that to the reader versus when you're like no this happened and I'm more sure about this and I thought that that felt very it felt very honest and very I you know it was well, anyway, I'm just not fangirling about this book <laughs> <laughs> but um so I guess in terms of you know one of the things you've talked about is that this allowed you to have conversations especially with your mother but also with your father and that you were and that allowed you to make these imaginative leaps and I was wondering do you have any advice for people who are thinking yeah I I too would like to learn how to explain myself but god I don't know how to talk to my aunt my dad whoever mm -hmm. it is for them how do you how did how did you start having those conversations um it takes time it takes a lot of time and, and it uh it can be I think it can be frustrating at first what because I, I I started off with um you know like the the what I thought I was supposed to do just the the list of questions and <laughs> uh and like calling them on the phone and be like I have a list of questions and yeah um the answers were very, um, they were more um, concise and they were maybe performed a little bit and, and rose colored, uh, but they, op I think they opened up um, some channels at least because I, what I noticed is that the, uh, um, more answers would come out later in, in just casual conversation and uh, um, that uh, that you just have to pay attention to and, and listen. Um, and, and one, another thing I noticed too, is that I would hear, I would remember, I remember things that were told to me when I was a child. And then when I would verify them later as an adult, uh, they, they shifted a little bit. That's what I mean, kind of like where the answers are performed or, or so I had to do, I definitely had to do some translating of like, oh, why'd they change that? You know, like, uh, um, <laughs> and 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 do a little bit of guesswork and speculation of just where you know where the truth lies. Uh, but again, like I said, like their their memories, all of our memories are flawed, and the, you know, th and theirs are too. And it and it has a lot to do with where you are now. You know, like like what where you are now uh, um, really heavily impacts like what and why you remember. You know, uh, um, oh, that was another quote, like why you remember has a lot to do with what you're remembering. Uh, was it uh, from that I heard from the, the this memory expert? <laughs> uh, and uh, so I think that that's important to take into account too. Uh, um, when, you're, when you're asking uh, loved ones questions and, but I found mostly what, uh, what helped for me was it's, spending time to still uh you know yeah you just have to spend time if you're with these people <laughs> and uh to to get them to open up it's it, it uh um and and my my parents are it's strange because they're I consider all of us pretty private people <laughs> uh but uh like even myself it's, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I, I love to write, just love to write is because um, it's easier, right? Like you, you, you know, uh, to, it's easier to put yourself out in the world on a page than just, than, than, than talk, than saying it, right? Ta performing it, talking it. Uh, um, and, uh, and same with my parents, they are, uh, they're private people, but I got the sense too that they wanted their uh, truths to be known, 
even if it was someone else saying them. Uh, and, and I think that that's, um, I think that's important too for, for uh, budding memoirists is, I, I know a lot of people are like, that's, that's not mine to tell, that's not mine to tell. And, and that is a fine line, right? Uh, I, I struggled with it too. It, 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 you know, kept me awake a lot of nights, just like, am I allowed to share this? Am I allowed? Uh, but I think if, if, it, if it affected you and it impacted you, I think it's still yours. Um, that's something that my, a lot of my uh, parents and uh, I'm sorry, my parents and a lot of my friends even said that, who are in this book uh, um, that they said it's it's yours, you know, like it, uh, um, you you can you, like uh, you have every right to tell it, uh, and 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 that oh man, that uh, uh, just just all all the all the the humanity, the good the good humans. <laughs> And in my life that allowed me and uh, gave, gave me their blessing uh, uh, to put them in this book. Uh, but I think, yeah, you have to um, let them trust you uh, to, and, and even if you don't explicitly ask permission, just having that uh, in your mind that it, 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 that it is a responsibility, but it's also a gift. You know, uh, I think people want to, uh, have, have be explained, yeah, um, and 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 uh, uh, yeah. And if you're and if you're offering that, if you're being, if you're really trying to get at a truth, even if it's subjective, then um, then it's definitely worth being told. I wonder, actually, because um, you know, mm -hmm. the, your the title of your book, I think the Okinawa part is. Sorry, my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Okinawa part of your title is pretty self-explanatory, um, but I think given everything you've said, sort of the command or request of the first word of the speak Okinawa, is that in some way related to that take, not take, using of those stories or embodiment of those stories for you? Oh yeah, uh, um, I mean, really, what it is 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 a, is a summoning of it within myself you know uh um it's it's a uh, uh yeah i mean I, I was worried about that title too if it sounds like you know like speak okinawa like uh, <laughs> um like yeah uh, but it, i i meant it as like just from within me um it, it it's kind of um uh a, a little bit of a play on on the um uh uh, the Speak Memory Memoir by Nabokov. Is that? Uh, yeah, it's him. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, 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 when I'm on the spot, I'm like, I can't, rem I can never remember names. Uh, and uh, just the Speak Memory, but for me, it's the Speak History uh, um, and right and collective memory. Uh, um, and and it and it's for uh, it's for myself to understand myself. It's it's kind of it's it's a it's a part of me that I denied for so long. Like I said, it, I was thirty four years old, and I um, for much of my life I uh, I rejected my Okinawan heritage. I I didn't want to admit that it exists, uh, that it existed, uh, and so this was a, a chance for me to say, uh, say like, well now 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 you can talk right now you can exist uh, uh, for me, uh, and and uh, and so that. That's kind of where uh, the, the idea for the title came from. Well, I think it's beautiful. It didn't sound too bossy. It, sound, it sounded like <laughs> a spell, actually, because of a summoning. And I, I think that's mm -hmm. really lovely. So we're wrapping up now because, Sally, I, I would love to quiz you all day, but I think you have places to be. Who knows? <laughs> um, but um, just one last question is, um, it's sort of a question the foundation likes to ask because, you know, we like to pass on the reading. And that is, who are the writers that inspired you and you know why would you advise people who haven't already read that work that maybe they might want to go check it out mm -hmm. um uh i mean one of my uh just the the best uh and everyone everyone's heard of this book she's a goddess uh the woman warrior um uh, by maxine hong kingston uh was the first book i ever read by uh an, a an asian american author um, and, uh, 
and it wasn't until I was in my 30s, which is kind of like, what? How did that happen? Uh, um, and and uh, so and she and she, uh, she's a, it's gorgeous. Her prose is perfect, and uh, and but the way that she um, writes about the uh, immigrant experience and and be, you know being a child of uh, of immigrants and uh, um, and uh, from and and um, okay, just just recapture like just is able to capture the history and mythology of China on the page too. But I what what really struck me is that this is an experience that you're allowed to write about. You know, I had never read anything that that talked about that, like that the the the, the disconnect between trying trying to fit in in America. You know, uh, um, uh, I had only read stories by people who already did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, so that was really, that, that was groundbreaking for me is that, oh, like you can write about this. You can actually write about uh, um, this experience. And so she, it, it, it kind of gave me permission. Um, I love uh, um, uh, Jamaica Kincaid and Joan Didion and uh, Mary Carr is like the, you know, kind of another godmother of memoir. Um, and another book too, that I have to give a shout out to is, um, uh, the Buddha in the attic by Julia Tsuka. Um, and, and she, uh, uh, she writes about, uh, this is a book about, um, not, not so much war brides, but, um, uh, like just mail order brides, I guess, for lack of a better, uh, term of, of their, there were Japanese immigrants, uh, in, in California, uh, um, and the um, and then their wives uh, um, coming coming to and it's and it's in first person plural as well, and uh, it uh, reading it's it's devastating and beautiful and it definitely inspired me uh, for that that approach for the historical sections, um, and uh, yeah I, when I when I read it uh, I said oh that's that's it I'm I'm stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm stealing that. Uh, um, but but it, it's it's so incredibly well done and heartbreaking and beautiful from from cover to cover. So, and there's so many more, right? There, I could go. I, I yeah. So like I could go on and on about all the uh, amazing writers and authors that there are. Oh, thank you for sharing that because I also love that book and mm -hmm. as you talked about I was like oh of course I can see the lineage and I love that with you okay. know <laughs> connection between books that you really love so mm -hmm. thank, thank you for sharing that with us um okay so and thank you for just speaking here and being here today and thank I'm you here. I got to zoom meet you because I read this book and I happen to know your English editor a little and I like literally I wrote her and I was like can you please give me this lady's email address so that I can tell her I loved her book if that's not creepy and she was like I no longer work at the same publishing house but you could email her um, and then I yeah. got this instead yeah so, absolutely <laughs> absolutely anytime um, <laughs> yeah this is a great conversation thank you thank you so for those of you who are listening and who are thinking oh we want to come to more of these talks please do um the next bottom drawer interview as part of this program is with rahul reina interviewed by sarah shafi and it's on the 24th of june at 2 p.m and it's on all of their social channels including whatever you're watching us on right now thank you so much for being here today with us